Hi there, and welcome to Wade's Workshop. A couple of things we're going to do today. We're going to make a start on a new project. Before I explain what that's going to be, I'd like to say to everybody, thank you so much for subscribing. As we stand today, I think we're on 936, something like that, subscribers. 97,000 views on the AIDS Workshop channel. So we're pushing towards 100,000 views and the magic 1,000 subscribers. So again, thank you all so much for watching and for subscribing. It's really appreciated and it really drives me on to do bigger and better things in the future. So let's talk about this next project. I just kicked the toolbox on the floor here. Let's talk about the next project. I'm going to make what's known as a fire piston. Now, I'm not the first person to have made one of these, and certainly not to have shown making it on YouTube. Um, the particular one I'm going to make, I'm going to give full credit to a guy called Clickspring, who's uh, got a YouTube channel. This guy, uh, Australian guy, I believe, he's absolutely awesome what he can do with his hand, uh, hand fitting, hand making clocks and things like that mostly. He's making a copy of the Antikythera mechanism using all the traditional methods that probably would have been used at the time. So, yeah, Click Springs the guy who I've seen make one of these. It wasn't him that inspired me to make it. I've seen these things being used, um, wooden ones and what have you, in the past and thought I'd like to make one. Did a bit of research on YouTube and Click Spring, who is somebody who I do follow, actually has done this project. But I'm going to go into it in some sort of detail in a way that it would be shown as a beginner on a new lathe um, a beginner would be able to make it. So let's get straight on with that. So first of all, I had to buy a bit of material for this job. It was made from stock that I didn't have in stock. I tend to buy material by the metre or sometimes two metres, depending on how much I'm going to use. So what I've actually got is a metre length of three quarter inch brass, a metre length of three eighths of an inch brass, and a metre length of three quarter inch aluminium. I've got plenty of aluminium here, but uh, it's all sort of inch and a half. But this calls for a roughly three quarter, rather than waste all that aluminium, I bought a length of it. Now, what we're going to need for this project is nowhere near a metre, but it's good to have the stock. It's going to be five inches of three eighths diameter brass, five inches of um, three quarter diameter aluminium, and three inches of the three quarter diameter brass. So that's the material you're going to need for the brass and aluminium parts of it and there are a few other bits and bobs as well which I'll explain. So if you want to go uh, sort of copy this project you'll need three quarter aluminium, three quarter brass and three eight brass and you need approximately five inches of all of those. So I'll open the packet up, we'll cut ourselves some bits off the end and we'll start machining. So I've just chopped off the material I need and as we were saying three eighths diameter brass, five inch long, three quarter brass, three inch long, and three quarter aluminium, again, five inch long. These aren't the finished lengths, but it leaves approximately an inch on for machining um, to hold in the chuck, and this is going to make two ends. If you haven't seen the click spring version of this being made, uh, that'll be the last time I mention it, um, what we have is basically we're making a piston, a cylinder, and a cylinder head. The aluminium is going to make the cylinder, the smaller diameter brass is going to make a piston, it's going to slide up and down in here. One piece of this is going to be a cylinder head on one end of the aluminium and the other piece of this is going to be the little pusher for the piston. So, first thing we'll do, I believe, we're going to make the cylinder. So let's get on with that. So. The finished size of the cylinder is going to be approximately 95 millimeters long, or just over 95. So if I have 95 sticking out, I've actually got 102 sticking out, that will give me more than enough for machining the outside of this. So let's just see how that's running. Running pretty true. I think that'll be more than uh, acceptable for what I need. Okay, so we're sticking out a long way here. And I'm just going to be very gently face off the end. Just scratch it through. 
don't want to go for it here because we're sticking out a long way as I said so there we are let's just check that's cleaned up yeah a tiny bit more Speed things up a bit. Another couple of thousand. Look, where are we? <laughs> and then let's just put a finish on there. Finish and cut. Happy days. So, next step is we're going to send to drill the end. I think you've seen me do this a million times. Bit of WD. And um, we'll send it till the end. Now I do intend on skimming the outside of this. A little bit more. Find my little brush. And this end does have to be drilled out. So what I'm going to do... is put a life sender in there and just give the outside a skim at this stage. So, we've faced the end and we've centre drilled it. So I've got my centre in now. So a quick look at what this diameter is. It's measuring up as the raw stock at 19.07. And I want my end cap to be exactly the same diameter when I've skimmed it. And that's measuring 18.9. So I'm going to go for a finished diameter of somewhere around 18.8. .8. And that should allow me enough for this to clean up to the same diameter. So 18.8 .8 and I'm 19.07. So I got about 2.25 in total. So I'll touch off. Just touch in there. Give myself a zero. I'll take 0.15 off first, along its length. And we just give a light skimmer on there. We'll have another measure and it should be something like 2 thou a side or 0.05 a side to come off. And I just wind that on with my DRO. Again, I'm using those specialist tips for aluminium, They're, uh, the carbide tips for aluminium. And it's a nice fresh tip in there, it's doing a beautiful job on that finish. I'm running at 1100 RPM, or 1150. Not critical this, let's just have a little measure, 18.9. That's the same diameter as my brass is at the moment, so another 0.1, 0.05 aside. Let's just do that on the DRO. There we are, 0.05. Quick spray of the WD. And away to go. We're going to be decorating this afterwards. Do grooves and what have you. Make it look nice. Looking at that finish, I probably won't need to do any polishing at all, but uh, we may do at the end if we get some machining marks and what have you. But the outside isn't functional. It's always nice to have a good finish anyway. So we'll just run this up to the chuck, or close to the chuck, shall I say. Okay, just set my mirror there, give yourself a reference for later. So there we are, I've run it at 18.75, absolutely fine. So that 18.9, it will become clear, 0.95, will clean up to match the same diameter at a later date. And we've got a lovely finish, end faced, and the centre. 
Now, I believe the original spec had a quarter inch deep M10 by 1.25, M10 fine thread in there. Now, I haven't got an M10 fine die to make the mating part, but I do have an M10 by 1.5, the standard M10. So what I'm going to do is make the thread a little bit deeper, make the overall thing a little bit deeper. I'm going to put approximately 10 mil of thread in there at M10. M10 standard metric, M10 course as we call it. So up with the drill, and we'll drill it out, perhaps an inch or so, and then tap it out. M10 course. Six mil drill up, little WD-40 again, and we'll rough it out. Six mil. Running with a thousand RPM here with aluminium. I'll spray a WD-40. I wasn't paying attention to how deep I was going, but I can go probably about 25 mil deep. Let's have a look. It says 20 on my tail stop. If I go in to about 45, not important this. There we are. 45 mil deep. So next step, open it up. 8.5 diameter for an M10 course. Here's the uh, 8.5 drill. Tapping drill for M10 metric. M10 course. I just call it M10. The standard metric threads I call M10. And if it was an M10 fine, I'd call it an M10 fine. But they're actually, a standard M10 is called an M10 course. The M10 by 1.5. We we'll just call it metric M10, unless it's the fine. We had to stop there for a moment because the camera battery was uh, shouting at me, so to speak. So as you can see, I got my camera plugged in now, um, just charging the battery. As I was plugging it in, I noticed this great big beastie in here. I don't know whether you can pick him up in the shadows. Let's see if I can get the camera off the uh, tripod. Excuse my handshake for a moment. Let's have a look at you. Uh, he doesn't come out too well. He's in the dark there. I don't want to disturb him. But there's uh, a great big uh, beastie. I've just put my 8 mil drill up in the chuck. And it's sticking out about 89 mil to the point. So... I'm going to stop this drill about 5 mil from the chuck, something like that. So I can go all the way in until I'm 5 millimeters from the chuck because I haven't got that much travel on my tailstock to be able to do a measurement, so to speak. But I've got a visual guide on the drill bit, I suppose you call it. Or I think that drill may be blunt. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's not the best. I'll put in for sharpening. Never mind, I'll grab an 8.1, it'll do. Uh, just looking at the grind on that. That looks alright. Just double check myself. Yeah, if I go within about 5 mil of the chuck, I will be far away. Let's have a look. That's a lot better. I've used that 8 mil drill a lot. I suppose uh, I don't tend to sharpen them until I notice that they're blunt. 
uh, and that was noticeably blunt. <laughs> I'll just pack away at this. I suppose you would c consider this to be deep drilling. Um, I'm going about 85 mil, so I'm going 10 times the diameter of the drill deep. Well, you would consider a deep drilling. Not deep drilling like rifle drilling, but uh, yeah, 10 times the diameter of the drill, I suppose you would call that deep drilling. Or well, certainly to the uh, full depth of the drill. And a bit. So as we said, we know that this bar is, all by the shouting, 100mm long. I want to leave 10mm of thread in the other end, which is already there, of M10. This is going to be a smaller diameter. Not much, but it is smaller. 9.4 as we said. And I'm going to drill it that deep. 90 millimeters. I'm not in a great hurry with this. When I am deep in the hole, I don't want it to clog up. So I've got a few mil. Clear the drill bit. Try not to whack the chunk with my uh, swap rush. See, I'm doing it in stages here, not tr just trying to go for it. Quite claggy, uh, claggy, buttery stuff with aluminium, and it tends to it can weld to the tip. It glues itself on. It's like butter with knots in it. That's <laughs> the way I would use it described in the past. But yeah, as long as you've got lubrication, it doesn't mind too much. some point before I get full depth, it'll probably break through into the back of that uh, threaded hole. Get to the point now where the flutes, I'll give you a shot of this, where the flutes have run out and I'm actually entering with the plain shank of the drill. I'll show you that. Okay. Okay, keeping it lubricated. As you can see, that drill has gone beyond the flutes. Now, there'll be nowhere for the swarf to go. So I'm taking care to clear out before I fill these flutes. I've actually broken through into that M10 now, so it's not so dangerous. And I'll wind in, yeah, it seems fine, until I get to about 5mm from the chuck. So I know I'm in about 85mm there. Again, because I haven't got the travel on my tailstock to do it in one hit with a measurement, I've just put a bit of tape on my drill, 90 millimeters back from the point, so I know if I wind it in until the tape is flush with the front of the job, I will have gone 90 millimeters. But that's to the point, so I'll probably be actually to the shoulder, probably about 88. So I may just enter that tape just a spot. I have to cut the masking tape back to give myself a a bit to hold on in the chuck so I'm not gripping on the tape. So I'm aiming for the tape line, perhaps a millimetre beyond. Keep clearing out the swarf out of the cut. Keeping it, keeping it covered in WD. Expect 
dipped in the cup to get a little deeper in this last 5 mil because uh, I only went 85 deep with the only went 85 millimeters deep with the 8 mil drill. So right, let's get up to the tape. I think I'll stop at the tape on this one. There. And we'll check that hole for size. So I drilled this out 9.4 and it's in, but it's a really tight fit. Well, you know, not tight tight, it's a running fit, shall we call it. Um, I think a tiny bit slacker is what I'm looking for. There's going to be an O-ring on the end of here, which seals against the bore. I think I'm going to go for 9.5 in there. So I've drilled it out 9.5 now. Bit of play in it. I'll just uh, see what depths we're at. Uh. It goes into 90 mil, or it certainly will when I put a little uh, champer on the end of the piston at a later date. So that's where we are with that end. So this being the cylinder bore, this being the piston, this will be the piston that goes up the cylinder bore to a stop at the end, which will be the cylinder head, which will have 10 millimeter long thread and will come right through the M10 in the back end of this and be virtually exactly on the end of this piston and I got a bit of play in there that's what I'm looking for I'm feeling this play and looking at my clearance I want a little bit more play so I'm going to go for a 9.6 I think so my finished story is I have a 9.7 mil drilled hole up in there, 90 millimeters deep. And that'll give approximately 0.3 clearance, six hour side. That should be enough to get my O-ring in there and still work as a compressive O-ring. Let's just check my depth. 39, 39 to 90, 129. Just have a quick, uh, yeah, 130, 129, that's showing 130 long, just under 40, and uh, it's approximately just under, uh, yeah, I mean it's within quarter mil, it's 90 millimetres deep. By the time I uh, put a little chamfer on here, I'm sure it'll go 90 millimetres deep. I think we'll have a little chamfer on that corner, so we'll make that the next trick. Ooh. So where's my chamfer tool? Where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? You know what? It's been so long since I've done any machining in the workshop here that uh, I'm forgetting where I put things. Okay, it's probably been a month or two with uh, with me going on holiday. Well, it's certainly been a month with me going on holiday and then uh, my decking project before that which still isn't finished I haven't done the steps yet we'll have a little shampoo on me so I think we'll also have a shampoo in that ball just to help the o-ring start so up with a shampooing tool That should do it. Yep, just a little 45 on the end, probably half mil. So that's the basics of my cylinder. Face to length and skimmed on the OD. Face to length of 100 mil. Drilled and tapped M10 that end. 
and then drilled out 90 millimeters deep by 9.7 in this case 0.3 clearance on my stock or 0.3 on the nominal of the drill to that and the piston will then fit quite slackly down inside the bore. 